What's going on guys, my name is Matt, and something that I emphasize a lot on the channel is that if you're wanting the absolute most value for your money, especially when building a lower end PC, your best option is to buy used hardware. PC hardware is a lot more durable than most people give it credit for, and usually a component will become irrelevant performance wise far before it fails. This is something that myself and others talk about a lot, but rarely do you see people comparing used components with their new price competitor, and that's where this video comes in. The GPU you're looking at right now is the GT1030, a decent budget graphics card offering from Nvidia boasting the ability to play any esports title with ease at 60fps and even many AAA titles if you're willing to turn down a few settings and live with slightly lower frame rates. The GT1030 runs in price around $70-$80 to $80 depending on what variant you pick up. Though I think this is a decent value for the money you're paying, I wanted to test and see what kind of performance difference you would get by going used and spending spending that 70 or so dollars on the used market. So after doing a little bit of research, I found that the best used GPU going for a similar price to the GT1030 is the Nvidia GTX 762GB. With an average sale price of $75 on eBay, the GTX 760 comes in nearly identical price wise to the GT1030. After watching some listings, I actually won an auction for the Asus DirectCU2 GTX 760 for only $58 ship. Which which is considerably lower than the average selling price which goes to show if you're patient and persistent, great deals can be found. So why am I comparing these two cards? Well, I want to show you guys the performance difference you can expect to gain by going used. So let's talk about each of these GPUs for a minute starting with the 1030. The GT1030 which launched this past summer is a great entry level GPU for people wanting to get into PC gaming. Its biggest positives are its low power draw and small size, with a TDP of only 30 watts, the GT1030 sips on power and can even be powered by the vast majority of pre-built PCs. This plus the fact it comes in half height single slot variants means if your PC has a 16x PCIe slot, the GT1030 is almost guaranteed to work with it. The version I have is a passively cooled variant from MSI. This card does run a little hot, but no fans means it's dead silent, which is something I personally value very highly, and even though this card is passively cooled, it's clocked and performed performs exactly the same as the actively cooled MSI variants. With 384 CUDA cores that boost to over 1460 MHz and 2GB of GDDR5 video memory, the GT1030 works okay for the vast majority of games. With that being said, trying to run modern AAA titles on the GT1030 definitely will leave much to be desired. So all you have is 75 ish dollars and need a GPU but don't think the 1030 will cut it, well that's where the GTX 760 will come into play. The GTX 760 which launched June of 2013 is an older card but still provides plenty of power at a really great price. With 1152 CUDA cores at around 1GHz, the GTX 760 has plenty of raw power for most games and it has 2GB of GDDR5 video memory. The version I have is the Asus DirectCU2 model. This card features a dual fan design, a black PCB, and a quad nickel plated copper heat pipe cooler with a substantial aluminum aluminum fin array that extends beyond the PCB itself. Overall, for being 4.5 years old, I think this card has aged quite nicely and the mostly neutral theme means it could fit well visually in most PC builds. Also, the GTX 760 supports Shadowplay, which is Nvidia's amazing screen capture software, but the GT1030 does not. Being that this is an older card, it's definitely not as power efficient as the newer GPUs with a TDP of 170 watts and the requirement of an 8 pin PCIe power connector, this card consumes much more power than the 1030 and requires a larger power supply, but honestly any 400 or 450 watt PSU should be perfectly capable of running a system with a GTX 760 installed. So now let's talk about testing. To test these two GPUs, I decided to put them up against four popular games that I think people might use these cards to play. These games are Fortnite Battle Royale, Overwatch, CSGO, and Rocket League. These represent a good suite of low to mid range games that a lot of people are playing. For the test system, I paired these GPUs with a Ryzen 7 1700, slightly overclocked to 3.6GHz, and 16GB of DDR4 RAM. Obviously this isn't the most realistic combination, but I did it to ensure 
there was no CPU bottleneck when playing these games. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks. The first game tested was Fortnite Battle Royale. It's like PUBG with building and it's free, so if you haven't already checked it out, I would highly recommend playing it. It's a moderately demanding game and is the most demanding overall out of the four games tested. I tested both cards at 1080p with the medium preset. The GT 1030 gave a playable experience but wasn't really enjoyable with a 43 FPS average and 1% lows of 37. The GTX 760 really surprised me in this title, giving a 76 FPS average with 1% lows of 63. This is over a 75% increase in average frame rate by going with the GTX 760 in this title. Overall, both cards gave a playable experience, but I would take the smooth and consistent 60 FPS from the 760 any day of the week. Moving on to the second title I tested, Overwatch, which is currently the most popular FPS game out. It's an esports title, but a lot of older systems have trouble running it. I tested both cards at 1080p with the medium preset. The GT 1030 was able to produce an average of 87 with 1% lows of 65. This was a great experience and goes to show you if Overwatch is the most demanding game you plan on playing, the GT 1030 works perfectly fine for it. The GTX 760 did see a minor bump in FPS with an average of 110 and 1% lows of 84, so there was a definite jump in FPS by going with the 760, but it wasn't nearly as big as the jump we saw in Fortnite. The third game I tested was Rocket League, a popular esports title where you play soccer as cars. I tested both cards at 1080p max settings. The GT 1030 provided an average of 52 FPS with 1% lows of 43. This was kind of disappointing to see that to get to 60 FPS on the 1030, you would have to turn down some of the graphical settings. The GTX 760 on the other hand performed really well, providing an average of 106 FPS with 1% lows of 84. This was basically a doubling in performance by opting for the GTX 760 over the GT 1030. The final game I tested was CSGO, which I tested at 1080p, very high settings. The GT 1030 produced an average of 122 FPS with 1% lows of 84, and the GTX 760 produced an average of 150 FPS with 1% lows of 90. So the 760 did again provide a noticeable bump in performance but not nearly as much as a few of the other games. Overall, in each game, the GTX 760 proved to be considerably more powerful than the GT 1030 it was facing up against. As you can see, going used in this situation can net you some serious performance gains, and remember this is just one part. Doing this for other parts of your system, like your CPU, could net you even more performance for the same amount of money, and it's in my opinion that the slight risk of a used part dying earlier than a new part is well worth the performance increase you're getting in return. Again, if you're on a budget, going used is in my opinion a very good option and I hope this video is a good proof of why I choose to buy many of my parts used. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.